Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ambassador and uh, President Sullivan, to be here today. Uh, we have uh, gathered 12 students from Sofia University. Uh, as uh, you can see, this is uh, the Ambassador. And next <laughs> is uh, President Sullivan of uh, Virginia, University of Virginia. And, of course, you all know the uh, President Hayashita. Uh, I'm a professor of this university, Fujisaki, and uh, I'll be the moderator here. Uh, this is a very special day today. Uh, we have ambassador and president here. You, you don't have ambassador of United States uh, on Sofia campus every day, so this is, first thing, very special. Second, this is right after G7 Isashima Summit and President Obama's historic visit to Hiroshima, so this is very special. And third, usually if uh, ambassador comes, it's uh, speeches or lectures, but this time it's not only that. It's you to express your views, and uh, ambassador and president may respond to you or express their views, uh, uh, responses. So this, in that way, this is interactive and very special. So we very much look forward to this. We are very grateful for, uh, to you, Ambassador, for uh, being here. And uh, we couldn't do really too much to express our gratitude, so we just prepared this glorious day. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you're not nervous. Um, and thank you, Ambassador Fujisaki, for inviting us here today, uh, Chancellor Koso, President Hayashita, and, and um, President Sullivan, uh, and all of you. I think, as Ambassador Fujisaki said, often when I go to visit uh, schools, I only hear myself. And so um, I really think it's important to hear what uh, is on your minds, um, because as we just learned through the G7 process, there are so many issues that no country can solve alone and that we really need the next generation to begin to, to take on. Uh, and so I know this university has a great tradition of, of international student exchange and bringing people together, bringing the world together. Uh, and I think that's really the most important thing uh, that, that our world needs right now. So um, Japan did an amazing job hosting the G7 and the issues that Japan chose to focus on, whether it was women, uh, health care, uh, education, um, energy, climate, uh, wealth inequality, um, are all central to the future. So I know that you've prepared some remarks, so I'm really interested uh, in hearing them. And I hope that all of you uh, have become interested in these issues and will uh, pursue them by traveling, hopefully, to the United States hopefully to the University of Virginia, but um, really anywhere, uh, and have some uh, kind of practical experience as well as academic learning to, to meet others and figure out how you're going to help solve these challenges. So I'm delighted to have this opportunity to be with you and to hear your presentations. I'm very pleased to be here with Ambassador Kennedy. Um, two of her uncles are graduates of the University of Virginia and a number of her cousins as well. Yeah. Um, I also want to thank the administration of Sophia University and your faculty who have welcomed us so graciously. Sophia means wisdom, and I hope we have this opportunity to look for wisdom with one another. Hello, my name is Reina Yamamoto, and I'm a third-year student from English department. Our group's topic is health in the developing countries, and we are thinking about it for, uh, from three perspectives, water, medicine, and education. And as my suggestion of water, G7 should offer more financial support to train people in the developing countries um, capable of the safe water management. Uh, hello, I'm Yusuke. Uh, I'm a senior student and uh, belong to the Faculty of Economics. And um, my topic is how to decrease the price of medicine in developing countries. Reducing medicine price is necessary to improve access to medicine in those countries. So I have one suggestion. I propose creating a new international agreement uh, that enforces pharma pharmaceutical companies to put self approved labels on the uh, medicine packages uh, which are sold in developed countries. Um, my name is Mayu. I'm a junior 
from education department, and I would like to hear uh, you hear your ideas about health education and its capabilities that people in both developing countries and developed countries can learn and improve their health. Yes, I think those are, are great ideas. Uh, I think that the um, what you've identified as uh, the ways in which the developed countries and the developing countries need to partner uh, is really critical to solving health care challenges as well as um, in many other areas. And I think the global health security agenda that is um, something that Japan and the United States are both leading uh, is a really important initiative where developed countries uh, adopt developing countries and help them set up the infrastructure clinics and education programs <clears throat> so that um, and send trainers in and uh, receive nurses or doctors in training in the developed countries uh, so that there's a real relationship that builds up and a real sense of uh, shared uh, purpose. Good morning. My name is Hannah. I major in international studies in legal studies. And I chose the topic responding to health crisis like Ebola because last spring I actually went to Ethiopia and I'm, I got interested in how develop, developing countries can enforce human security in developing countries. Today I would like you to ask about universal health coverage. And I would like to ask you what is your domestic policy regard, um, regarding the domestic policy in the United States? How do you see EHC? Like such as um, compared to your national healthcare system, and what? How can the United States contribute to the achievement of UHC? Thank you. I'm Chikamasa. Um, I'm a senior. I'm studying at law, and I chose this topic because I was in Bangkok last year, and we are the place that Zika virus is happening right now. And I was I choose a, a topic um, about the transportation network. Um, it's broadening and it's really quickly. Uh, and the virus moves quickly and broadly. So do you think the, the current WHO sanitation management is, uh, could prevent the next health crisis? Thank you. Hello, nice to meet you. My name is Hiroya Kimpara. I'm third grade, and my major is education. So today, I, I think the appropriate education about health problem can lead to a better world, uh, which doesn't suffer from the health crisis. You know, I, I think... There's going to be a healthcare G7 coming up uh, in, at the end of the summer. Uh, so I would really, first of all, encourage all of you who are interested in this issue to really follow uh, that and, you know, follow what documents are being negotiated uh, now uh, and leading up to it and sort of the final communiques because uh, Japan and the United States, which is really what I know the most about, are partnering uh, partnered together to fight Ebola in Africa and to prevent its spread, uh, as well as working together on Zika now. There's, a, I think, a very promising drug being developed here in Japan. Can you tell us a little bit about any involvements that you have outside the classroom? Are you going to be able to vote now at a younger age this year? Are you people interested in the election or just interested in the U.S. election? <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about... I know you all spend all your time in the classroom, but... When you're not in the classroom, can you tell us what, what you read? or yes. Do you read the newspaper, or do you just read it on your phone? And I'm using the application mixed source, uh, like from the Yomiuri to mm -hmm. Asahi to the, uh, any country's newspaper to Brazil to <laughs> anything. It's an application. Nikkei, I, um, Japan economic, right? economist, and Mainichi. And in terms of um, foreign medias, I follow Twitter account of Washington Post and New York Times. So uh, this group is uh, going to just speak, so maybe you can okay, uh, express right. your views as well. I have a lot well. more questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So my name is Nozomi, and I'm a senior majoring in political science, and I'm very honored to be here today. So as a group of educational exchange and global citizenship, we would like to make a proposal to establish um, educational exchange program for high school students. Today, because of the age restriction and very expensive cost, only limited students have opportunity to join um, this kind of educational exchange program or studying abroad. So to support those um, students, I would like to make 
to proposals. The first one is to establish government-funded program, and the second point is to establish a UN scholarship fund, mainly um, led by the G7 countries. My name is Mayuko Jodai, and I'm a fourth-year student and studying Portuguese and international uh, uh, relations. And so, um, the first uh, suggestion that I want to give is uh, bringing the high school, the U.S. high school, to the to Japan. And it's a real U.S. Uh, high school, like a U.S. Uh, it's a school that the U.S. students are studying in the U.S. So it's a good opportunity. And the second one is uh, establishing the um, Ministry of Education uh, together with the U.S. government and the Japanese government. Uh, I tried to uh, go study abroad in the U.S. when I was high school, but um, the procedure was not that clear. <laughs> Hello, my name is Paul Wright. Uh, I'm a master's student here in the Department of Global Studies focused in Japanese studies. Um, I wanted to address the topic of... Uh, of uh, educational exchange as, uh, as a focus or a focal point for uh, global citizenship because I am a uh, U.S. student studying abroad. I feel like this is uh, right in my uh, area of expertise. Uh, um, I think it's important that we increase the opportunity both in the U.S. and in Japan to provide uh, opportunities perhaps for uh, recently graduated uh, university students to come to Japan to teach not just through programs like JET, but also um, perhaps set up something through the G7, not just for Japan, but n through all the G7 countries. Those are all issues that, that I've been working on and um, my colleagues at the embassy also work on. I think um, obviously you've identified the, you know, the challenge of, of learning about other cultures, and um, I think there's increasing demand for short-term programs, which make it more difficult to really obviously master a language, but at the same time, I think are an important bridge and introduction uh, for students. So we've been working to simplify the process, um, and I agree with you. I think, I think the Japanese government has made a uh, real commitment to making it more affordable and possible. Hello, my name is Saki, and um, I'm a senior student in the Faculty of Liberal Arts. Um, our group will be presenting on girls' and women's education from three perspectives, the first being uh, the perspective of developing nations, and the other two uh, are the political and economic perspectives. And um, the latter two, the political and economic perspectives, will be focused on from the viewpoint of developed nations. Um, I'm going to focus on the shortage of female teachers in relation to girls being uneducated. I realize that there are other factors behind the issue of uneducated girls, but I feel that if we increase the number of uh, female teachers, we could have more or less um, uh, a positive influence on girls' education. So uh, my suggestion in increasing the number of female teachers to get more educated girls is to first educate girls separately from boys so that girls can properly gain education, and in the meantime, boys can learn about girls' rights to education. And then after that, gradual integration should take place into the same schools so that boys, can, boys and girls can learn together. And um, this integration, I think, should take place after a fair number of female teachers comprise the number of teachers in the school. Hi, um, I'm Akiko Okamoto, and I'm a graduate student in the program of Global Studies. Um, in G7 countries, um, although there are relatively equal opportunities in the education between men and women, uh, women uh, continue to be underrepresented as uh, political leaders. And I believe um, that w um, education can play a role in empowering women in um, the pro political sphere. Uh, first, um, I think that the main obstacles to women's part um, political participations are social norms and um, attitudes against women as leaders. So um, deep changes in social norms are necessary um, in the long term. Um, so I suggest, um, unlike Saki's opinion, I believe that um, uh, gender-neutral school education in preschools and elementary schools or even in middle schools, on our, which um, discourages gender stereotyping, um, can help change these norms. Hello, my, uh, my name is Haruka Sakai. And uh, from me, I would like to mention about women empowerment from the perspective of economics. 
And uh, even nowadays, uh, there has been the big income gap between men and women in the world. The, the one of the background of this problem is uh, the short number of women in margin, uh, managerial positions. So I would like to propose one suggestion to improve the situation. Uh, the ex in, the, in terms of the collaboration between the U.S. and Japan, uh, I would like to propose the one problem, the exchange problem that female uh, employees can, uh, in both countries can learn each other together, uh, such as um, leadership skills, financial skills in companies. Mm -hmm. the, the commitment and, and the articulate the nature that you've expressed uh, your opinions in is really a great start. And I really encourage you, I think one of the things that gets women into politics uh, is getting involved in an issue or an NGO. And you find that the opportunities for speaking, for organizing, for advocacy, for outreach, uh, often come doing the, that work, uh, as well as going to workshops and, um, and focusing on building the skills. I think the women leaders, uh, for example, Nancy Pelosi in the U.S., the first woman Speaker of the House, um, really got involved in politics. She had five children, and she was uh, concerned about the safety of the air and water in her community in California. And so I think that one thing led to another. And so I think it's you, – you can't start by thinking, you know, I, I have to be – functioning at the national level, you just think about, well, I'm going to change somebody's mind who's sitting next to me, and then I'm going to change, you know, the minds of my three friends. And uh, so I think that you build your own skills and capacity, and I think it's really important to, to pick an issue that matters to you, because then it won't be so scary when you have to speak up or um, get out of your comfort zone. Or In terms of economics, I mean, obviously... There's a huge push here for, uh, and a huge need for women to advance, and I think companies are making the commitment, but um, there's a lot of work to do, and same is true in the U.S. Uh, I was speaking to students be, uh, just before you were coming, and uh, they were very interested in uh, uh, asking you about uh, the president's uh, visit uh, to Hiroshima as well. I think it was a historic visit. Um, the first president come to the Hiroshima, and I was very moved with his um, words, that when he mentioned why we come to Hiroshima, um, it was very impressive for me. And how do you think the president visit to Hiroshima from the U.S. side as an ambassador? And what could we do for our world free from the nuclear power and weapons? Thank you. And I read the whole speech of President Obama, and it was very moving and touching. And what do you expect both Japanese and American citizens in react to his speech and his visit to Hiroshima. Thank you. I mean, I think the president's words are really the place to start, um, and I thought they were extremely powerful. And I think that the reception and the reaction from the Japanese public uh, has been, you know, overwhelming, overwhelmingly positive. And I think uh, for him, it really showed the power of this issue that transcends generations. And I think it's a great tribute to the alliance that he was so warmly received uh, and that this issue was, um, you know, the history, the, the current um, state of disarmament, all of those issues play into it, and I think uh, that's why Hiroshima is such a powerful, one of the powerful place, because it really is both historic and critical to the future. So. Uh, so it was a really a privilege to be there. The President's nuclear security summit and the work that Japan and Korea are now doing together um, in the face of the threat from North Korea is really an important model of, of another kind of a more modern kind of reconciliation. So I think that the power of reconciliation was really the theme of his trip to both Vietnam and Japan, uh, and I think that, that that is something that our world really... Uh, needs to see. Uh, and then as far as the issue in itself, it's, it's a very complicated, difficult, scientific, technological, emotional, uh, national issue that needs to be worked on in all those fronts. And it takes real leadership to do it. And 
We have President Obama right now who is exercising that kind of leadership, um, but also, you know, we need, we, we need to see it in more places so that we can continue to make progress. I'd like uh, Ambassador President Sullivan and President Hayashita to uh, sort of make a very short comment on uh, what they had as the impression of today's discussions. Uh, um, well, I, I think it's great. Uh, I really learned a lot from all of you. Thank you so much for the preparation that you did. Um, I don't know if you're aware of it, but there, there were um, G7 Youth Leader Summit as well as High School Summit, and there was a youth declaration in Hiroshima also. Uh, so I think it's, it's great that we need uh, you know, your generation of people in school uh, to really take these issues forward. So I want to congratulate all of you and thank you for putting in all this time. Uh, and effort, and I think uh, some great ideas. So I will definitely be uh, passing them on and, and talking about them. So thank you for, for, for this morning. Well, I very much enjoyed um, interacting with you, and I congratulate you for taking on big, difficult problems and thinking about them. And I want to encourage you to do that even after you've left school. It helps you be more informed citizens, helps you make a difference in your life, and you've already shown a willingness to do that. So I urge you to simply um, keep on doing it. Thank you for the hard work you've put in to get ready for this morning and for the useful ideas and suggestions that you've brought forth. Uh, I'm really proud of our students. And yesterday I joined the uh, symposium uh, organized by the Global Compact. The uh, topic is uh, SDGs, uh, mm -hmm. Sustainable Development Goals. And all the issues are involved in this United Nations project. And I was really impressed because uh, at the symposium, the uh, President John F. Kennedy's picture was there. And uh, I heard that this project was started by him. And today, his daughter is here. So i really impressed today's uh, discussion also. So thank you very much for uh, coming and uh, have a great discussion with us. Thank you very much. So uh, thank Not you very much. I just want to know what I should be reading. <laughs>